Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, everyone. Wonderful to see such a beautiful and large crowd here in Washington. Um, I am here to talk to you about HUD support for Indian country. The Biden-Harris administration, as you know, has been working to fulfill our promises to Indian country. President Biden has taken substantial efforts, including executive actions to strengthen nation-to-nation -nation relationships and improve tribal consultation. At HUD, we've moved quickly to engage with tribes and further strengthen our programs in Indian country. So I wanna take a few minutes to update you about the work that HUD is doing following the lead of the president. So as I imagine everyone knows, President Biden recently signed Executive Order 14112 to usher in the next era of tribal self-determination. HUD senior leaders are working diligently to implement the executive order and identify opportunities to expand our impact so that you feel it. In the coming year, we'll be working across the federal government to do two important things. First, we will assess the true funding needs in Indian country and get a sense of how much tribal programs have been underfunded historically. And second, we'll be looking at how we provide federal funding to tribes. This includes funding new and innovative ways to provide flexibility to tribes, reducing cumbersome administrative requirements, and providing tribal funding set-asides when we can. We want tribes and tribal nonprofits to access additional pots of grant funding at HUD. We've already begun working to implement the new directives and we'll be communicating more information as we make additional progress over the year. Last year, HUD held two in-person meetings of the Tribal Intergovernmental Advisory Committee, which we call TIAC. I am proud to serve on this body. If you're not familiar with TIAC, it's a committee of 15 elected tribal leaders or their designees meeting regularly through working groups and in person to advise HUD senior leadership on how the agency's policies impact Indian country and to make recommendations. First meeting was held last spring here in Washington at HUD headquarters, and the second was held in Tucson, Arizona, during which Tohono O'odham Nation hosted a tour of their community for the TIAC members and HUD senior leadership. The opportunity to learn and hear directly from tribes has been an important part of the tribal engagement process. So as we learn about the various programming issues and funding challenges, we're working to update our policies and our notices of funding opportunities. So a recent example, we expanded the Section 184 program service area in the Southern Plains region to allow more Native families to have access to home ownership. I'm pleased that for the past couple of years, under the leadership of our fantastic Deputy Assistant Secretary for Native American Programs, Heidi Frechette, ONAP's programs have received record, record levels of funding. Last year, ONAP received more than a billion dollars in funding for the Indian Housing Block Grant, Indian Community Development Block Grant, and Tribal HUD VASH program, for example. Earlier this year, we announced the Indian Housing Block Grant, or IHBG, competitive NOFO to provide $150 million in funding for constructing new housing. Applications are due March 19th, and we're excited to fund amazing new housing construction projects in tribal communities, so please bring those applications in. While it's a relatively new program, it's responsible for a substantial increase in housing inventory in uh, Indian country. Last year's NOFO is gonna result in almost 400 new units of housing across Indian country. And while that's a long way from addressing the full need, we think it's an important step in the right direction. Very soon, my office is gonna announce new funding. The Preservation and Revitalization Initiative for Community Enhancement, or the PRICE program, is a brand new pot of funding providing $225 million to preserve, protect, and grow the supply of manufactured housing across the country. This is the first time HUD has had grants uniquely for manufactured housing. The funding will provide crucial support particularly in manufactured housing communities that have been unassisted but face critical challenges around infrastructure, resilience, and just the need to replace old units. We did formal consultations with tribe to, to, tribes to make sure that our NOFO would be responsive to your needs. We reviewed and incorporated recommendations in this NOFO that's gonna be announced soon. And I wanna be clear, I can't talk about what's in the NOFO, but I can tell you the statute allows us to do a tribal set aside. 
I am so pleased. Thank you, Congress. Uh, thank, I'm so pleased that this is the 50th anniversary of the Community Development Block Grant, or CDBG program. That's created uh, the Indian Community Development Block Grant program, and over the past half century, HUD has put more than $2 billion into Indian country through the ICDBG program. It's a much needed economic force multiplier in tribal communities. Just last week, we announced the first round of 20 million in ICDBG awards and hope to announce the rest of the awards very soon. Uh, we know that too many First Americans are living in overcrowding or experiencing homelessness, living in a place not fit for human habitation. So in my office, we've been working to develop a series of resources for communities, uh, for tribal communities who want to access continuum of care funding for people experiencing homelessness. So we're creating a forum called the Tribal Homelessness Network for tribes and TDHEs to learn more about this funding. And we'd be happy to talk with any tribes that are interested about how you might be able to plug